everybody and welcome to another, another Friday night trivia game here on display. I'm your host Sarah Priebus, but you can call me coach because between the Winter Olympics in Beijing and the Super Bowl right here in Los Angeles, it's the biggest weekend of the year for sports and it is no different for display trivia. Did anyone come to win? Yeah? Let me know in the chat. Good. Good. That's the kind of mindset you're going to need today. I'm not going to waste any time getting into this game because the only thing you're going to need other than sheer focus and determination are the rules. You'll have 10 seconds each to answer 10 questions. Make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi and that you're holding your phone vertically so that when a new question pops up on your screen, you can pick the right one. The questions will get harder as we go. And make sure to choose carefully because once you tap, there's no going back. Don't worry though, because if you get one wrong, you can still keep playing, just not for the cash. Your winnings will show up in your display bank if you're active in the app and have a completed profile. Let's make sure you all were paying attention and do a quick practice question. A good athlete always starts with a warm up. So tell me, would you rather touch down, touch base? You can't touch this. I'm going to go with a little touchdown in the spirit of tonight's Super Bowl game. And I hope all of you score touchdowns tonight in tonight's game. Take home a piece of that $500 prize. That would be a way to start game day weekend, right? Extra chicken wings, extra bean dips for all. 58% of you are with me on that touchdown. 24% of you said touch base. And 17% of you can't touch this. Maybe they, we can't touch your trivia skills. I love that. Friends. This is great. Again, this was for no points. It just gets those fingers warm. That's how we do our warm-ups here on Display Trivia. So let's do this. Are you ready? I see Bruce 1988 is ready. Nikki D is ready. Nisha Thor is ready. Super Pee Wee is ready. All right. Look alive, friends, because it's time for Display Trivia. Question one. The Super Bowl is the biggest game of the year in what sport? American football, cricket, polo. The Super Bowl is the biggest game of the year in what sport? American football, cricket, polo. I'll say it. The name is misleading. I mean, I don't see a single bowl on that field competing to be the world's greatest bowl. Just a bunch of big dudes patted down from head to toe who seem really angry with each other for no reason at all. Dudes, we'd be a lot less angry if we all just decided that mixing bowls are the superior bowls. Why? Because you can do anything with a mixing bowl. Forget actual cooking. What else do you eat popcorn out of at home? And when baking, it's the bowl that holds the spoon you get to lick. Crown the winner already. The actual sport, though, that we're playing this Sunday is American football. 95% of you got that. Well done. Question two. Animal Planet hosts a complimentary broadcast during the Super Bowl each year that prominently features what animal? Otters, dogs, bears. Animal Planet hosts a complimentary broadcast during the Super Bowl each year that prominently features what animal? Otters, dogs, bears. I love this little side broadcast. It's basically the non-dairy option of game day programming. The Super Bowl is obviously a whole milk latte. This option is like an oat milk frappuccino. Tons of fun, mostly sugar, but definitely better for our lactose intolerant friends. If you're not watching either of these and you can't be bothered to not watch a World War II documentary, then congrats. You are the lukewarm black tea of TV viewers on Super Bowl Sunday. This show is the Puppy Bowl. And while it might not be the biggest game night of the year, it is certainly the cutest. 90% of you knew it's dogs. Tails are wagging into Q3. Let's do it. By their nicknames, which of the following cities does not have a team in the Super Bowl this year? The Queen City, the City of Angels, the City by the Bay. By their nicknames, which of the following cities does not have a team in the Super Bowl this year? The Queen City, the City of Angels, the City by the Bay. A nickname is always a good way to show fondness, but some city nicknames don't make any sense, right? The Queen City, like if she's really the queen like she says she is, shouldn't all the cities be hers? And the city by the bay, um, I mean, can we just 
be a little bit more specific. Which bay? Like there's literally thousands of bays. Don't even get me started on the Big Apple. You'd be lucky to find anything but pizza slices and those overpriced drinks on Broadway. The Big Apple is New York, of course. The Queen City is Cincinnati, home of the Bengals. Los Angeles Rams come from the City of Angels, and the city by the bay is San Francisco, which is what we were looking for here. 68%, kind of savage on that one. Let's go into Q4. The American beer brand that has historically advertised at the Super Bowl using horses usually features what breed? Clydesdales, Arabians, Galaneers Cobb. The American beer brand that has historically advertised at the Super Bowl using horses usually features what breed? Clydesdales, Arabians, Galaneers Cobb. Personally, I didn't even know these horses existed outside of this beer brand. I mean, I thought maybe the beer brand also manufactured these horses. It was like, type of branding. I mean, can a beer really just claim an entire breed of horses? That's like Starbucks being like, Shiba Inus, those are just ours now. When you see one, you think of coffee. So the actual reason Budweiser uses Clydesdales is because these horses literally pull. Like they could haul beer all over the dang place. That's fine. I mean, just let them crack one open at the end of their shift. Clydesdales, yes, 90% of you got it. Question five. It's estimated that Americans eat over 1 billion of this food item on Super Bowl Sunday. Potato chips, chicken wings, meatballs. It's estimated that Americans eat over 1 billion of this food item on Super Bowl Sunday. Potato chips, chicken wings, meatballs. You do the math. There are 300 million Americans together consuming a billion of something. If you do some simple division, which is easy, I mean, this country is so divided already, that comes out to about 3.5 per person. Of course, you have to factor out vegetarians and then, you know, probably babies who can't chew solid foods and then probably people on diets because let's face it, none of these are necessarily a healthy snack, especially once you get the sauces in play. And once you take out all those subgroups, it's probably just one dude eating 1 billion chicken wings all by himself. I wonder if he prefers blue cheese or ranch. Yeah, chicken wings is what we were looking for. 92% of you knew that. Halfway there. Question six. The NFL player with the most Super Bowl wins took home his first in what year? 2000, 2002, 2004. The NFL player with the most Super Bowl wins took home his first in what year? 2000, 2002, 2004. I'm more of a quality over quantity gal. Sure, he has the most Super Bowls of all time, but are they the best Super Bowls of all time? Did they keep us gripped to the edges of our seats or were they all giant snooze fests? Did the crowd go wild at every turn or were we all kind of phoning it in? Sure, Tom Cruise has made about 20 Mission Impossibles, but didn't they kind of stop being good after number three? This sports legend who just announced his retirement is Tom Brady, who led the Patriots to victory for his Super Bowl in 2002. Since then, he's taken home a total of seven Super Bowls. 81% of you knew it, 2002, that's right. Question seven. The former name of the New York Jets would include all of the following figures except Hyperion, Thea, the Cyclops. The former name of the New York Jets would include all of the following figures except Hyperion, Thea, the Cyclops. Where do we come up with names for sports teams? Sometimes I feel like these teams are just drawing names out of a hat or doing Mad Libs or just using whatever the Wordle was that day. Yay, go Elders! I might not have gotten that Wordle, but hey, you know, it's a great name for a sports team. The New York Jets were formerly known as the Titans, the deities from Greek mythology that preceded the gods known as Olympians. And the Cyclops is the only one here who wasn't considered a Titan. Oof! Oof, okay, 63%. Kinda savage, but I'll take it. Question eight, let's do it. The landmark Super Bowl commercial that aired in 1984 was directed by an acclaimed filmmaker with which of the following credits? The Departed, Fight Club, Alien. The landmark Super Bowl commercial that aired in 1984 was directed by an acclaimed filmmaker with which of the following credits? The Departed, Fight Club, Alien. A Super Bowl ad can do a lot. Remember the first time we ever saw those talking baby commercials? 
Sure, no one knows what GoDaddy was selling, but no one could ever get over those chatty babies. Sometimes it doesn't even matter what you're selling, as long as you've got a great ad. Cavemen from Geico? Oh, I love those guys, but I couldn't for the life of me telling you what Geico was selling. No, I mean, I know it's insurance, okay? I just can't actually wrap my brain around the idea of insurance. Like, why? This ad was for Apple, and it was directed by Ridley Scott, famed director of movies like Alien. Scorsese and Fincher have also directed Super Bowl commercials, as well as given us films like The Departed and Fight Club. And if you tuned into my live earlier, you definitely got that. 82% of you, woo, Q9. The, direct, the river that flows through the American city, originally named Los Santiville, originates from all of the following source rivers, except the Allegheny, Niangua, the Monongahela. The river that flows through the American city, originally named Los Santiville, originates from all of the following source rivers, except the Allegheny, the Niangua, the Monongahela. Yeah, that's right. Rivers, much like a lot of celebrities and pro athletes are not self-made. They have a lot of help. The biggest rivers in the world didn't start out that way, no. They were fed by other rivers so they could blossom from tiny creeks to rushing rapids, you hear? Rivers are basically trust fund babies. What I'm saying is if you're starting out as a river, don't compare yourself to the mighty Mississippi. The girl takes all the credit for making it to the Gulf of Mexico, but she gets help from the Missouri and the Ohio, which is the river that flows through the Queen City. Cincinnati, originally named Lasantiville. The Ohio, the river, not the state, is fed by both the Allegheny and the Monongahela. 82% of you got it. It's time for the final question. <laughs> question 10. Out of the total number of current NFL teams, which proportion represents how many have never attended a Super Bowl? One sixth, one eighth, one tenth. Out of the total number of current NFL teams, which proportion represents how many have never attended a Super Bowl? One sixth, one eighth, one tenth. I hate to break it to you, but sports is all about math, people. How do you think we calculate wins? Based on a feeling? This isn't West Side Story, although if you've seen that play, you know really no one wins because we're all victims when there's violence. But in sports, you count up scores using numbers, duh. And how do you find stats? Uh, math. Also, these people get paid a ton. You can't tell me we don't have some financial advisors crunching the numbers. But this question is asking, of all 32 current NFL teams, how many have never been in a Super Bowl? The answer is four, the Browns, the Lions, the Texans, and the Jaguars. So when you divide four by 32, you get one eighth. 79% of you did that math at the end. Look at you. Now let's look at your numbers. Display beast, damn. You came, you slayed, you displayed your knowledge, and you are gonna get paid just in time to make some wagers for the big game this weekend. That is what I call a win. Friends, shout out those scores in the chat. Let me cheer you on. Let me be your cheerleader. I might not be the biggest sports person, but I cheer you on every single day of the week. All right, we got 273 users splitting that pot of 500 bucks. Bravo. Who won? Lee Art got a five. Listen, five out of 10 football questions? That is pretty good in my books. We got Dennis Ultima with a nine out of 10. Ash Schnorr, one. Who else was a winner? 10 out of 10, that's amazing. Facts guru, bravo. Friends, I am so impressed. Roxy Velma, nine out of 10. Bronze medalist, you weren't even bronze, you got the gold with 10. Gary Michael, seven out of 10. And best way to end the week, thank you. I had such a, I had a good time too, everyone. Friends, we are back in the studio next week. I hope you all have a great weekend. We'll see you next week for your normally scheduled programming right here on display.